I want God to question whether I trust him or not, because obviously he trusts me a whole lot. He sent his son to die for me. Hello, beautiful people of the internet. Welcome back or welcome to my YouTube channel if you're new here. Hi, hello. I'm Mary Lee, and we have some changes on this channel right now. First of all, I have a mic. It's tiny. I love it. Got it from Amazon as a as a Christmas gift. I hope that this sounds a lot better than without a mic because I'm just using my iPhone. I hope this is better. I hope this is cool. I hope that it's working. I've done a couple of tests and uh, I think that it is. I think it sounds better. I like that I get to hold a tiny little microphone like you see people on TikTok do. I think it's kind of podcasty. I think it's kind of hostish. Let me know. I'm usually filming these videos when there's still light outside, but uh, that did not happen today because life, even though it's seven o'clock and I haven't eaten dinner, we're still gonna film this video. Why? Because the Holy Spirit put it on my heart. I hope that you guys are enjoying your day or have enjoyed your day, depends on when you are watching this. It's been chill, but very enjoyable, and I think I'm learning a lot of things. I also have the amazing opportunity this Friday, it'll happen after I post this- No, it'll happen before this video goes up, but I get the opportunity to perform some poetry this week, and I've been prepping for it, so it's kind of where my headspace has been. And I'm very grateful and very happy that even though my situation has changed, God is still allowing me to perform what I love to perform. And I'm doing a little self-reflection poetry performance. Anyways, you guys, I got some inspiration from the Holy Spirit today, from God, about what I wanted to film today. See, last week, I wasn't able to upload a video partially because... I just didn't know what I wanted to talk about. I didn't know what God wanted me to talk about. And then it was also my birthday last week, so plans, I guess, kind of got in the way. I've been struggling on what I want to talk about because I've had a couple ideas, but nothing was really, like, calling my attention, if you know what I mean. Nothing was really like, mm, let's talk about this. This is on your heart. Praise be to God, truly, because he gave me an idea for, like, a series I can do on this channel that maybe other people are doing. I don't know. But something I love to talk about with friends or with family is what God is teaching me. So God was like, why not make that a series on your YouTube channel and it'll change and it'll grow with time and it'll always be personalized with me and God, because that's what he's trying to teach me right now. So I thought that'd be cool. Thought it'd be cool to do. So this is the first episode. As you can probably tell by the title or thumbnail of this video, depending on what I end up calling this, today's video is going to be about surrender and what I feel like God is trying to teach me about surrender and why this is important and why this is something that I need to learn and others might also need to learn. So let's start off by talking about my struggle and probably a lot of people's struggle with surrender, but I'm not going to speak for anyone, I'm only going to speak for myself and what I know. I struggle with surrender because I can be a bit of a control freak. I have always been this way. I like to be in charge. I like to have a say in everything that is going on around me or anything that involves me. I like to have a say. I like to know what's going on. I like to be in control. I like to make decisions. I like to be in charge. Control freak, whatever you want to call it. Bossy. Maybe I, I, I've been told I can be bossy, so. I struggle with that and I think it comes, I think before it came from a lack of trust in others and others ability to fulfill what i what i needed or what i wanted i guess you can also call that an insecurity like i just didn't trust anyone else with what was going to happen in my life 
and that was before I really knew God. And so what I've caught myself feeling and doing a lot is that sometimes I'm not trusting God, which is bizarre, right? Because obviously I should trust in him. Like I read his word every day. I know why I should trust in him. He's good and he's right and he's fair and he loves us. And he's always had my life planned out step by step before I was even born. Why should I not trust in him? But I think it comes from being let down by so many people that it became to the point where I was like, I just want to do everything myself. So now that I'm trying to develop this personalized relationship with God, sometimes I find myself doing the same thing with him. I'm like, I want to give you control, but not too much. You know what I mean? I want to let you in, but not to the point where you're in control of everything. And some things I'm fighting with him on or have. And some things I've been able to surrender. But some things I just will fight God on. And I and I catch myself doing that a lot recently. And maybe it's thoughts that come from the enemy. Or maybe it's just my own brain that has been programmed a certain way for so long. And now God is trying to break it. But that's why we're talking about it today. Because it's very relevant. And a lot of what I'm dealing with and a lot of what I'm trying to learn and understand about God. And I think a very important thing to learn how to do is obey God, especially you are first beginning your relationship with him. Because when you first start trying to really know God, really want to do this whole God thing, you're going to be hit with a lot of temptation. You're going to be hit with a lot of doubt. It's all new to you, right? And that's okay. Like, that's okay. It's okay to be hit with doubt. It's okay. I, I'm being hit with doubt right now. Like, can I really trust God with my life? Can I really do this whole thing about believing in God? And the answer is yes. Yes, you can. Yes, I can. But those thoughts, I think, are A, normal, but B, they're not necessarily right. I think it's hard to, like, to let God in everything which is what we're supposed to do. It is what we are supposed to do. But to let God into that day-to-day, not just the big things, but also every day, with every decision that we are going to make, we're supposed to have God at the center of it. And that's hard. I understand completely that it's so hard. I wish that it wasn't. I wish that it came naturally when I first, you know, declared Jesus as king and ruler, but it's, it's not the reality the reality is that sometimes i am fighting god for ownership of my life and sometimes i'm fighting god for control and i don't even know why because i i do trust him at least i believe i do but my actions don't always follow through with that and so i can understand why god is like do you do you really trust me i want god to question whether i trust him or not because obviously he trusts me a whole lot he sent his son to die for me so why should i not trust him that is a great question (laughs) something that's really important to acknowledge is that we live in a world today that is so based on individualism that is so based on how you can do the best for you and what you can do to achieve your dreams and what you can do to make your life the best and be happy right it's all about you It's all about being self-sufficient, self-serving, self-seeking. Because you do your thing and as long as it makes you happy, you know, that's awesome. And that's what you should be doing is, is what the message in a lot of what we hear today is. Is be self-sufficient, be self-serving, be selfish. Your desires, no matter what they are. No matter if they're good for you or they're bad for you, as long as you're happy, right? That I think... That is a huge message in our society. And that is another reason I find myself struggling is like, you know, I might see this person on social media or I might know someone in real life that is doing that and they are succeeding at what they want to be doing. You have to understand that just because it's good 
does not mean it is from God. And so when you look at those people who are succeeding, who are doing their thing, who are going for it, achieving their dreams and their desires, and they seem so happy, understand that those people could be shaken so easily the moment that those things are taken away. They're never going to be satisfied, truly. They're never truly going to be satisfied because happiness is so elusive. Happiness is changes what makes you happy changes for a good reason it can change for a bad reason but happiness is an is an elusive it's an illusion it 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 exists but it changes and it isn't always true or good you are chasing the things that god put on your heart and when you are doing the things god told you to do you are always going to be satisfied because his plan is perfect his plan has already been set out. All he's asking you to do is trust him and walk with him or run with him, depending on the season that you're in. And all of this self-sufficient achieving and, and goal striving and stri striving and manifestation, like it only lasts but so long. And so those people that seem happy right now, they're not going to be happy in a couple days. They might not even happy, be happy in like an hour. I mean, how, how many times have we gotten a toy that we thought was going to, like, be the ish? And then a couple weeks later, you're not even thinking about it. The point I'm trying to get here is that when you surrender to God's will, when you surrender your desires, your heart, your agenda to him, and you do what he wants you to do, you're always going to be satisfied. You're always going to feel full. You might not always be comfortable, but you're always going to have joy because you're going to learn to be grateful despite everything. Surrender is, is powerful and it's misconceived or I don't know what the right word is. It's, it's misrepresented. Like surrendering is seen as weak. It's seen as someone who can't stand on their own or someone who... You know, they can't do it themselves. Surrender, however, to God is powerful. It means you are resisting everything that the world is telling you, and you're giving it to God. That's powerful because you're basically saying, you know what? I'm gonna throw away my pride. I'm gonna throw away everything that I think basically is right. And I'm gonna follow what God says. That is strong. That is strength, especially in today's society where everyone is basically telling you the opposite. You're not weak because you surrender to God. You are strong because it means you can stand before the world and say, I trust God. That is strength and that is not weakness. Something really huge that I've had to surrender is my desires and my goals for college. I'm 18. I'm going to graduate high school in a couple months. And a year ago, I thought that I was going to be the girl applying to college and getting into college and getting those scholarships. And while I still could, I'm not because the closer I've gotten to God, I think the more sensitive to his will I've become. When I am going to make a decision, I have learned that when I feel peace about it, that is the Holy Spirit encouraging me to do it. But when I feel restlessness and when I feel anxiety, that's the Holy Spirit being like, mm, that's not what God wants you to do. People call it your gut, right? We, we blaspheme the Holy Spirit and, and, and kind of like shrug our shoulders. Like, no, that's your gut. You know, that's you, right? Again, self-sufficient. No, that's the Holy Spirit trying to tell you whether you should or should not do something based on God's will for you. Invite the Holy Spirit. Surrender your day, your will, your plan to God. And then ask him, what do you want me to do about this? And pay attention to how you feel. Ask God to be very clear with you about, you know, which one you're supposed to do. And I promise you, it might take you a couple of tries. It might take you some time. You might really have to sit and ask, pray, and meditate. 
but it's worth it because if I had gone through with, you know, I want to go to college, I want to go do this college thing. First of all, I have no idea what God wants me to study if he even wants me to go to college. I just know he doesn't want me to go right now. Two, don't even know where I would go. And three, I do not have the financial stability to do that. Nothing practical is in line, but if I listened to my worldly senses, going to college, <clears throat> sorry, going to college after high school because I'm such a good student, such a smart student, right? That's the right thing, according to the world, according to society. According to me a year ago, that was what I was going to do. Ended up just surrendering and saying, you know what, God, okay. Okay, <laughs> like that's, if that's what you want me to do, that's what you want me to do. Okay, I'll wait on you. And I can only imagine the beautiful things that he's going to bring of that. So that's just an example of something I've had to surrender that was kind of big. I think we've all been told that it's important to surrender to God, to obey God, to do his will and not yours, right? But why? probably a question a lot of us are asking but why god like why do i need to surrender to you it's only going to benefit you if you are genuinely trying to be the person that god has called you to be and not the person that you have called yourself to be if you are genuinely interested in growing closer to god strengthening your relationship with him you have to learn how to surrender it's something that i am trying really hard to learn how to do day to day it is a struggle because in our flesh we want to be self-fulfilling and selfish and to do what we want obviously surrendering to god would mean that we would obey him which would mean that you know we'll go to heaven <laughs> it's definitely a big reward but while we're here on earth why should we surrender to god right why now why here on earth is it important to surrender to god so i want to share with you some verses that kind of tell us why and hopefully give you some biblical encouragement to try to surrender to god i'm gonna to read to you romans 12 verse 2 do not be conformed to the pattern of this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. This verse is saying, don't listen to the world. <laughs> Do not listen to the world, but let God change the way that you think. Let God into your life so he can change your heart. Because then, and only then, Will you be able to begin to understand his will for you? And this verse is confirming that his will is perfect. It is pleasing and it is good. But we're never going to get to know that if we don't learn how to surrender. I've been noticing how when I let God into my day, when I let God into my life, he changes your desires. He changes what you thought you liked. He changes your interest what you want to achieve and what like i never thought i'd have a youtube channel where i'm talking about god that's a huge 360 from where i started 2023 and it's only the beginning of 2024 i've only been posting on this youtube channel for maybe three or four months now i never thought that this was going to happen it's definitely not how i started last year but it was something that god put on my heart only after i surrendered my previous youtube channel to him it was only after i said okay god i'm gonna stop doing this because it's you've made it obvious that you don't want me to do it did he say okay well this is something i do want you to do and let me tell you i enjoy filming these videos so much more and now i'm building a community that i love and i'm engaging with people and i'm encouraging people and i love that and that's something that i've always wanted to do i just didn't know it was going to be about god and now it is. And it is a desire I only learned because I surrendered to him. It is, a, it is a desire he changed. He renewed my mind. 
only because I surrendered to him. And it's, it's the point I'm going to be making, okay? Surrender is the key. Surrender, sometimes you got to surrender to move forward. You got to give something up to God to keep going and, and to do a new thing that he wants you to do. I also want to read to you guys Philippians chapter 2, starting at verse 5. In your relationship with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who, being in very nature God, did not consider equally with God. Equality with God, sorry. Something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that a name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to glory of God the Father. And you might be like, what the heck does that have to do with me? That's talking about Jesus. Well, we're called to live like Jesus, be like Jesus, think like Jesus, right? He is an example. And that's what this verse is talking about. It's saying, have the same mindset as God. I mean, sorry. <laughs> have the same mindset as Jesus Christ, who, even though he could have taken will of his own life he could have done the thing because first of all he is god he could have fallen for the devil's trap when the devil tempted him and said you don't have to do this you can do your own thing right like jesus out of everybody had the excuse to do his own will but the entire time jesus did the will of his father of god he was obedient and you know what came of his obedience god it says God put him in the highest place. God made it because Jesus followed his will. God rewarded him. Like Jesus is sitting at the right hand of God. Don't you want to be up there too? I mean, you're not going to have the same spot as Jesus because he's Jesus. But don't you want to be up there in God's favor? Don't you want to get rewarded from God because you're doing what he wants you to do? Don't you want to make God proud? We can only get there by being obedient, by surrendering to God. We also live in a society, in a culture, where I'm sure you've heard it, but that you're supposed to be the main character of your life. That you're supposed to be the boss, the CEO of your life. But if you believe in God, you cannot have that mindset. You cannot call yourself the main character because you are not the main character. Point blank, God is the main character. He is the writer of the story. He is the author. He is the story. He gets the glory. That rhymed. That was cool. You, you're not the main character. That is a humbling thing, but it's also something that we have to learn to surrender. Is that it's not always about you. It's not. When you're trying to become closer to God, like, it can't be about you. It has to be about him. That is the only way that that's going to happen. That's the only way your relationship with him is going to grow. Is that you, you have to surrender. And let me tell you something. Surrender is beautiful. Surrender brings peace. Because while you're so... While that person is so busy trying to, trying to take control of their life, trying to do this, trying to do that. Don't you realize that if they stop doing what they're doing, everything falls apart? That if they take a moment to rest, everything falls apart? You know that person that you're idolizing, you know, and it looks like they got their ish together? Do you know how hard they have to work? Do you know that if they take a day off, everything falls apart? Because they made themselves the author and the main character. That's a lot of responsibility. God never wanted to give us that. God is saying, no, no, no. Give me the work to do. Let me be in control. Let me decide. And you are just supposed to be you know, happy as a sheep to follow what God says. And I feel like people are going to be like, that sounds degrading or unhumane to just want to be a sheep. And I'm not meaning literally you want to like maha. I'm saying that 
when you give it to God, your worries, your stress lessens. At least your anxiety should. You you should worry about it less. Like I understand that so many of us are in so many different situations and so many of us are facing difficult things and I empathize with you. But God's word is God's word. You're still supposed to give it to him. And you might not be comfortable, but you should always have peace. That is, that's why Jesus died. To, to bring us peace, peace of mind and peace of heart. And so while that person, when they take an off day, they're going to be struggling. They're going to be backed up. They're going to be behind. They're going to have to figure it all out again. You're not. Because when you took a rest, God was still working. If God told you take a rest day, it's because he got it. I mean, he always has it. But what I'm saying is that while others have to be so worried about grinding, about always working, you don't have to be like that. You can take an off day and, and your life will still be okay. Things are still going to move because God never stopped moving. God commanded us to take rest and that's something that's not encouraged enough in our culture and our society in our modern day era it's always always be working always be grinding always be doing the next thing yeah you're gonna have to be like that if you want to be self working self glorifying you do have to do all of the work but when you surrender it to god you will find peace no matter what it looks like you will find rest because you don't have to be working all the time you have to you know, be doing your best, but your best doesn't have to, like, destroy you. Your best doesn't have to consume you. I mean, God really does act so little of us, because he really does do all of the work. He just asks us to give it to him. Give him the wheel. Give him the control. And watch the way that your life won't seem as burdenful. Well, I don't think that's a word. <laughs> watch how your life just, like, simplifies a little bit. That was a lot, huh? I feel like I'm gonna have a lot of fun editing this because I have a whole bunch of clips of me just talking. I hope that this video reaches the people and the person, even if it's just one person, that it is meant to. I hope that you guys have truly been encouraged to surrender something or convicted to surrender something. I hope that we can encourage each other and talk about this more because it's important and it's a real struggle to surrender and it's okay. I think it's something that we're all learning. I'm definitely learning and struggling with it and I hope maybe this video is relatable. Maybe it brings you some kind of peace or encouragement. I hope that God was able to use me as a vessel to talk to you guys. I appreciate you all for watching. Um, and sticking with me and enjoying this journey that we are embarking on together. Have a blessed and beautiful rest of your day. I love you all so much and never forget that God loves you so much more.